Fellow Cameroonians, my dear compatriots, the 6th November 2018 is announced to be the date of the swearing-in of the incumbent president, Mr. Paul Bia. It will be one of those sad days when the nation will watch banned the killing of the majority popular will, the grotesque show that will be offered by the actors of this tragedy of national defilement will consecrate the force of experience in abuse, the force of experience in manipulation, the force of experience in denial of justice. But at the same time, we must make this 6 November 2018 a unique and exceptional day, which marks more than ever before the beginning of the virtuous renaissance of our precious common and inalienable heritage that is Cameroon. On 7th October, more than 3 million Cameroonians from the interior and the diaspora went to the polls to choose their president of the republic. In spite of the massive and barbaric frauds of the regime in place, the figures from the polling stations make me your humble servant, the winner of this election. Against all patriotic logic, in perfect and gross ignorance of all the blatant irregularities denounced throughout Cameroon and the world, the Constitutional Council decided to proclaim Mr. Bia the winner of this election on the basis of documents fabricated for the occasion by the agencies of this power and in total contradiction with the truth of the ballot boxes. The imagination of some allowed the arbitrary attribution to each candidate of a percentage out of a void. On what grounds should we let such an injustice flourish? Let this be clear to all. We will never accept the results proclaimed by a biased constitutional council which have voluntarily decided to ignore the facts and to trample on law, justice and democracy to make an injustice, partisan and partial decision. Yes, my dear compatriots, most of you have placed your trust in me on 7th October and it is with hope and commitment that I would like to serve you and serve our dear and beautiful country at the highest level. In attaining this ultimate goal, I privilege the peaceful means for the triumph of truth because I cannot wreak havoc in my own country to access the presidential office. Others have shown us that they are ready to stay in power. But our plan is not that of the destruction of our country as 36 calamitous years of presidency have succeeded. Our wish is not to lead as if nothing had happened. A country in which two of its ten regions are voluntarily excluded from the national core by those who let tribalism prosper by organizing and structuring it in order to preserve at all costs including that of the break up of the nation a power that has become fruitless for all and profitable only to a small group of egocentric egoists in power for nearly four decades. On the contrary, we continue tirelessly to proclaim our commitment to peaceful change 
through the ballot box. Not the illusory peace that the regime claims, but a true peace, fruit of a harmonious development based on justice and the equitable distribution of wealth. Some people do not share this vision with us, but far from being naive and unrealistic, our option is the most appropriate for preserving the unity of our nation and the conditions for its future progress for shared development. To you, my brothers and sisters, in the English-speaking regions of Northwest and Southwest, I reiterate how much I suffer with you in this context of civil war in which you have been immersed for nearly two years. My ambition was and remains to put an end to this disaster as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the current circumstances prolong your suffering, but nothing is lost. To those who, undermined by fear, shrug their responsibilities, to those who in the name of their own personal interest, accept fraud and in inequity, injustice and institutional disorder. I would like to remind you that if unfortunately the danger that hangs over our country should strike it, it will be at the expense of the future of all our children without exception. Also, I urge you to be those Cameroonians who say no to injustice, who overcome their fears and courageously take the initiative to contribute to the rebirth of a virtuous and winning Cameroon for all. As far as I am concerned, I made my choice and you know it. No more yesterday than today. Never fear, nor the pursuit of my personal interest will never guide my political commitment. In this commitment, my heart, my mind, and my thoughts are all oriented towards improving the living conditions of Cameroonians, all Cameroonians, especially the smallest, the weakest, who have been plunged into abject poverty and suffer in silence despite the immense wealth of our country. My dear compatriots, many of you think and say that after this election things will never be the same again. But it's not enough to think or say it. We must act and continue to the resistance. In this perspective, while asking the national community to remain mobilized and vigilant, I invite the international community to take its responsibilities so that the will of the sovereign Cameroonian people expressed in the ballot boxes on the 7th October be restored according to the popular will. I propose in this regard the establishment of an independent international commission accepted by the parties which will be responsible for the recount of the votes on the basis of the confrontation of the procès verbaux from the local voting supervisory commission and registration sheets, polling station by polling station. I solemnly undertake to respect the conclusion of this proceeding, even if they are unfavorable to me. So, what are we afraid of? Instead of seeking the truth in this election to ensure the stability of our country, some people are asking us to simply accept injustice and abuse and move on to other things. To these people we say, no, we will resist. This is why I invite the other opposition candidates to join us 
especially Mr. Cabral Libby, who made the same accusations as us and who said that Paul Bia cannot have won this election. Even more importantly, he added that the election was won by an opposition candidate. I also invite Mr. Joshua Osi, whose request, well-founded and brilliantly defended by his lawyers and himself, have all been rejected in manifestly unfair manner. My interpellation is also addressed to Dr. Aramunda Njoya and Mr. Serge Espoir Matomba and does not exclude Mr. Franklin Ndifo because it is in our common interest to build a genuine Cameroonian democracy based on the respect of the rule of law and justice. I take this opportunity to send a patriotic and republican greeting to the men and women of exception who have shown that it was possible to work together by joining me in the construction of the winning coalition that powerfully and victoriously supported me during this 2018 presidential election. I would also like to thank all the Cameroonian people for their mobilization. To those who trusted me in choosing my humble person, I express my infinite gratitude and the ardent wish that they remain confident and keep the flame on. I respect the choice of those who voted for other candidates than me. I would like to send them my Republican fraternity. The li liberation of our country from the yoke of injustice and arbitrariness is a challenge to us all. Whoever we are, wherever we go, we must act. We are the most numerous and today the most determined. Fear is no longer on the side of the people, but on the side of the powerful, who have hungered the people and insulted them after having impoverished and despoiled them shamelessly. Let us continue to assume our positions and convince other Cameroonians, as some of our illustrious compatriots have done, like renowned artists, politicians, men and women of law, letters, science, education, media, sports, religious organizations, and of our precious civil society. I express my deepest gratitude to them all. I will not be able to mention you all who made this dream possible. You who are more and more joining our ranks in favor of change and shouting, no hold up. Some of you have suffered the barbarism of the regime for demonstrating peacefully to denounce this electoral holdup. Wherever you are, you have my infinite gratitude. Finally, I will address to the leaders and militants of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement without distinction my warm congratulations, my sincere thanks, and my great esteem. You have remained faithful to the commitment on which our political friendship is based. You have spared no effort to achieve our ideal of peaceful change through the ballot box. The fight we are now pursuing with our coalition and all Cameroonians of goodwill from within and from the diaspora is a fair and noble fight. Remain mobilized because the resistance to the holdup is just beginning.
Never forget, together it is possible. God bless you and protect Cameroon.